Okay, this problem right here is not that difficult. But uh, in order to see why this is an easy problem, you definitely have to understand a few things about powers and exponents. And in this symbol in mathematics, uh, some of you might call this a square root. Well, this is really not a square root. This is what we call a radical. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and tell you what the problem is here. We're trying to find the cube root of 27 times a squared times b cubed, all of this over 125 times a squared. Now, if you have the algebra skills to figure this out, that is outstanding. Matter of fact, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. But uh, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, if you're interested in learning algebra, this is definitely a problem that you uh, will need to be able to cut, or this type of problem is something you'll definitely um, have to know how to do. Again, this is not that difficult. And if you're totally lost, not a problem. I'm going to fully explain this in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so you don't even need a calculator, but if you want to use a calculator to assist you, no big deal. Let's go and take a look at the answer here. And the correct answer is the following. We have three times a squared times b, all of this over five. So that is the answer that uh, hopefully most of you got. Now, if you didn't get this answer and you're like, I am totally lost, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Why are you showing me this complicated stuff? I like those more basic uh, math problems like 2 plus 7 divided by 3. Well, listen, uh, I'm telling you right now, even if you've never learned algebra before or if you struggle in algebra, you can learn this stuff. It's all about just kind of breaking it down in its component parts. But uh, in fact, if uh, you did get this right, we must celebrate your success by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus A 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in the area of simplifying variable radical expressions they'll be like wow that is so advanced i know that you're going to make a lot of money when you get out of school all right so all jokes aside let's go and get into this because this is really important uh, stuff uh, especially for those of you that are interested in learning algebra Okay, so here is our problem, and there's a couple of uh, things that we need to be thinking about, right? So here we have the cube root of this whole thing right here. And matter of fact, let me just do a very simple example of the cube root, right? So the cube root, if I asked you what is the cube root of 8, okay, well, matter of fact, let's uh, do this here. What if I asked you what is the square root of 4, okay? Now, hopefully, you say, oh, that is 2, and you would be correct because... The square root right here, this symbol, really has a little 2 right there. That's called the index. We never um, write that when it comes to a square root. But basically what we're asking is, hey, what number times itself will, uh, gets you back to 4? And, of course, that's 2 times 2. But the cube root is asking what number times itself 3 times gets you back to 8. And, of course, the answer there is also 2. So there's a big difference between the cube root and a square root and the fifth root or whatever root. Of course, this can be whatever um, you know uh, number we want it to be. But just so you understand, this symbol right here is really not the square root symbol. Okay, yes, it is the square root, but it really is what we call a radical. So if you're interested in learning more about this, or if you're taking like an algebra course or a math course, you would be um, learning this under the topic of radical expressions, uh, uh, radical equations, etc. Okay, so uh, a couple things here. Before we tackle this problem, we want to make some observations, and here is the strategy that we're going to want to understand. And basically, I'll kind of break this up in two components. Now, there's some other things, some other um, kind of properties of uh, square roots and radicals. I'll get to those uh, here in a second. But basically, you want to be thinking about two big things here, two big strategies. And the first is called rational exponents. Okay, rational exponents. I'll show you what that means here in a second. And the next thing is we want to write numbers as powers. Okay, we want to write numbers as powers. So when you're faced with this type of uh, question, 
uh, you want to be thinking about these strategies right here. Let's go and take a look at what uh, these mean here, rational exponents. So in mathematics, when you hear this word rational, you want to think of fraction. Okay, so in math, a number like uh, one third would be considered a rational number. Okay, that's because it's a number that can be expressed as a fraction uh, where the numerator and denominator are what we call integers. Now, I don't want to get overly technical, so I'm kind of simplifying this or just kind of giving you some uh, kind of easy ways to think about this. But uh, rational, just think of fractions. Okay, so rational exponents are what? Well, uh, when it comes to powers like 2 to the third power, this 3 uh, up here is the exponent. This 2 is the base. Okay, so that's the base. This is the exponent. The entire thing uh, is a power. Okay, so when I'm thinking about rational exponents, I'm thinking about exponents, these little numbers up here that are fractions. Okay, so let's go and take a look at how this works. So the square root of 4, okay, we actually can write that as 4 to the 1 half power. Remember, there's a little 2 right here. Uh, when it uh, when it comes to the square root symbol, we never write that, but there is a little 2 there, a little invisible 2, if you will. But we can express the square root of 4 as 4 to the 1 half power. Now, if I wanted to use this same idea using, uh, of course, this is a rational exponent. If I wanted to uh, write the cube root of 4, I can use rational exponents to express that this way, 4 to the 1 third power. So whatever this number is, you're going to put that um, under 1 in this nice, lovely uh, fraction. Okay, so this is just a couple basic examples of rational exponents. All right, so now this next part is you want to write numbers as powers. All right, that's a really good technique to help you solve a lot of different problems involving powers and exponents, etc. So for example, if you see 16, you might think to yourself, all right, 16 is four squared, so that's good. Or you might think of 16 as two to the fourth, okay? The idea here is to think of numbers, uh, try to express numbers and values in terms of powers, and there's uh, oftentimes multiple different powers that will get you there, and some are gonna be more advantageous than others. Okay, so if you have these two things in mind, then you basically have the right uh, kind of uh, situational awareness, if you will, to solve a problem like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to do. So we're going to take this cube root, okay, this whole thing, this cube root written this way, and we're going to express this in terms of a rational exponent, all right? So basically, I'm just going to take this whole stuff right here, put it right here, and put some parentheses and take this whole thing to the one-third power, that's the same thing as this, okay? This right here uh, to the one-third power is the same thing as the cube root of this whole, uh, you know, variable expression right there, okay? So we're going to want to work uh, this problem in terms of using rational exponents. Now, this isn't the only way to approach this problem. Some of you might be, well, my algebra teacher or my math teacher told me to do it this way. That's perfectly fine as long as you can, um, uh, you know, get the right answer. I would say yes, but uh, I'm going to tell you right now, and when you get into the more advanced math, you just simply want to get used to uh, writing expressions using rational exponents. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically take this problem and write it this way, and now we're going to solve this problem. Okay, so that was the first step, is to write something using rational exponents. The next step is to do what? Well, the next step is to write um, our numbers, okay, as, um, write our numbers as uh, powers, right? Okay, so you can see here we have 27 and 125. We can write these as powers, but before you do that, what you want to do is try to clean up this expression, okay? Try to clean this up. Some of you might have done this uh, right off the bat. Uh, if others of you, you know, didn't see this, not a problem. Now, what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about right here, we have a to the eighth in the numerator and a, a squared out down in the denominator, okay? Now, a to the eighth means there's uh, eight a's up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And down here you have eight squared, you have two a's. So you can cross cancel two a's with these two a's and that leaves you with how many a's up here in the numerator? a to the six, okay? So you need to look for opportunities to kind of clean up what you can clean up easily. And right here, 
Uh, hopefully, uh, most of you were able to kind of see that. Okay, you should have uh, been able to do this even if you didn't know. Oh, you're dividing um, uh, powers here, so technically you would subtract the exponents, right? So in other words, have a to the eighth divided by a squared. There is a rule or property of powers and exponents where we simply subtract the exponents when the bases are the same, and we get the uh, same answer. Okay, so now that we have this nice and cleaned up, there's nothing else uh, for us that we can do that's easy. So let's take a look at these numbers. Now I have 27 and 125. There are no common factors here between these two fractions. In other words, I couldn't, I couldn't reduce this. But you know, uh, because you're thinking, hey, that, uh, you two math man, uh, he said to think of numbers as powers if you can. Now, are there any powers, right, that you can think of where you can express 27 and 125? Okay, think of that, and hopefully you're like, oh yes, there's some powers, and we're going to write those powers right now. Before we do that, though, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit that notification button. This really helps me, okay? Uh, it is my objective to reach as many people as I possibly can. Uh, you know, so many people struggle with math, and uh, it doesn't have to be that way, okay? If you, if you are interested in math or if you have a tough time learning math, okay, I'm just telling you right now, please do not give up. Okay, what you need is encouragement. And most importantly, you need clear and understandable instruction. Oftentimes, that's not what you're going to find in a classroom. I'm not making any judgment on uh, teachers, per se, or textbooks. But uh, oftentimes, you know, we, we learn when things are kind of explained to us in language that's just easier, non-textbooky. That's what I tried to deliver. But anyways, by you subscribing, it really does help the YouTube algorithm for me to help more people. So thank you very much. Matter of fact, this is the way I look right now. After you hit that subscribe button and that bell, let's continue on with the problem. Okay, so here, uh, here's um, kind of where we're at, right? We um, went ahead and rewrote this problem using uh, rational exponents. We cleaned up anything we could clean up in terms of a to the sixth power, right? We had a to the eighth a squared. Now we're like, okay, what do we do now? Well, we have 27 and 125. So you want to look for opportunities to write any number, any values you can as a power. So 27 can uh, be written as three uh, cubed, right? Three times three times three. Now, some of you might be like, what's that nine times three? You're like, oh, that's nine squared times three. Oh yes, three times three times three is 27. And 125 is five cubed, right? Five times five is 25, times five is 125. So we're gonna uh, wanna rewrite uh, both of these values right here uh, as uh, three cubed and five cubed. Okay, so here's what our problem is gonna look like right now. So we're almost um, ready to kind of simplify this situation. So we had to kind of do, you know, a little bit of work to kind of get it to this stage. But at this point right now, the way that this problem is set up, this is going to be very easy to simplify. Let's go and take a look at what we need to do in order to do that. So what we have to do is understand that we have kind of like a big power here. We've got a lot of powers, actually. Uh, this expression has a power here, a power. Each one of these things have a power to another power. Okay, there's an outside exponent. So the property of powers and exponents you want to keep in mind is the following, right? This is kind of formally how it's written. It's a to the m uh, to the nth power is equal to a to the m times n. What does that mean? It just simply means that when you have a power to another power, okay, like this, like 2 cubed squared, uh, well, what we could do is multiply that outside exponent to that inside exponent. So 2 times 3 is 6. So that's equal to 2 times 6. And so what we can do here is simply multiply this 1 third times all these exponents right here. And we will simplify uh, this problem. And you can see this is going to work out nicely because all of these right here are going to be divisible by 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So 1 third, and hopefully you're up to speed, on your fractions, one-third times three is what? One, right? So that's three to the first. One-third times six, and if I need to write this out, let me just do this. Six, or six of one times one-third is six over three, which of course is two. Okay, so that's a to the second power right there. One-third times three, again, is one, or b to the first. Now, you don't have to write to the first power. 
uh, it's kind of implied. The same thing right here with 3. That is 3 to the first. B is B to the first. So we have A squared. And then this 1 third, we can multiply down to that 5 uh, to the third power, which is going to be, of course, 5 to the first or 5. And there you go. Okay. Now, hopefully, what I accomplished in this video was to kind of you know, walk you through nice and slow. This is one example, okay, one example problem. But uh, the techniques that I used here will um, will basically be um, can be applied to all sorts of different type of uh, problems in algebra like this, right? Not only with radical expressions, but like exponential functions, logarithms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, you want to be thinking about, all right, I got a number. Can I write it as a power? Can I use rational exponents? Now, if you want to learn more about rational exponents, uh, you know, working with powers, etc. cetera. Uh, check out a couple of my courses. I'll leave the links to them uh, in the description below. Uh, I would probably recommend like my Algebra 2 course, um, although this a lot of this is Algebra 1. You'll find links to both of those courses in the description. Also, I have a ton of additional uh, videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this stuff as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.